Hi Mike, we all know you. Um, I'm Stefan, I'm making a Portal 2 mod for Portal 2 called Portal Revolution, which is very close to coming out, out, out finally. This is Jared, um, he's making our music for the mod. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Jared. Yeah, I've heard um, of Portal Revolution, but you did. I'm not, yeah. I, really? You know, I mean, any 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 information about that stuff kind of go rips through the building pretty quick, you know. I don't know if you released a trailer or something, but no, um, <laughs> not yet. No, I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure how it went around, but but yeah, there was definitely talk. At, at, there must have been some talk at Valve because we got a source code license. Um, oh, that's probably what it is. Yeah, but it's not what this is about. This is about the music, um, specifically about Portal Two. Um, later, also half of Alex, the industrial style which you've developed and you've talked about, um, and also a lot about the technical side because I've watched interviews of you. I've watched like the Steam Dev Days talks where you talk about TF2 and Dota and all of that stuff, which is really interesting. Um, but you also program, don't you? Yes, um, I am. It, it's really I find it really hard to call myself a programmer but at the end of the day it turns out i think i'm actually a pretty good programmer um but i uh it's not it's always been for me programming's always been in service of some artistic goal you know um i think the very first real programming job i had was writing some like pixel based animation 2d animation editor for uh like a the yamaha cx7 computer in Tokyo oh, wow. in like 1983. Um, and I just wanted to do animation for this TV station. And they were like, well, how are we going to do it? And then I said, well, I've got this computer. And so I, it was written in basic. It was really simple, but um, I was able to make these animations for this TV station. And then I also sold them the code so they could make their own animations, you know? Um, and it just kind of went from there. I guess I have a, natural aptitude for computers and i know some people really don't you know um but i apparently i do and so but it's still kind of remain that remains sort of my approach to it um but i've done it enough at this point like pretty hardcore like i one point i was working for a company called um euphonics who later sold their they sold they were a mixing console company um that did a digitally automated certain now this goes you know this is like in the late 80s um and so they were the first to have a digitally like a digital input surface that then communicated with the way they did it then is it would communicate with a sequence computer as a sequencer so you could record every move knobs like back then it was only faders that and they were usually flying faders, like moving faders. Um, you know, it's like Neve and SSL both had flying faders, but uh, but Euphonics was the first to do the whole surface digital, and then mm. but then it communicated to like an analog mainframe. I know this is super. You said it's technical, so here you go. <laughs> analog mainframe that sounded really killer. It was a great sounding machine. In fact, I think the number two or three customer was Hans Zimmer early Hans Zimmer, not the Hans Zimmer we know today, but like kind of true romance era Hans Zimmer. <laughs> um, but uh, true romance, true, yeah, true romance. Um, and, but, uh, and then they sold to Avid. But so I, at that time, I, you know, I was programming um, machine level, you know, machine code, not machine code. It was a, uh, yeah, machine language. Sorry. Um, Assembler? Yeah, yeah, it was a similar level code. You know, it wasn't C, you know, it was actually um, for the chips themselves yeah, and assembly. had to be able to, I learned to read, you know, uh, schematics and whatnot. So I've kind of gone way, way down programming rabbit holes at times, but then um, I always kind of come back. The whole point is to do it so that I can make art, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. All right. Oh. Well, let's start with the first question. <laughs> always, <laughs> always, already ten minutes in. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, sorry. It's, I, it's I tend to. to I have long answers. I have very. Long oh, this answers. is great. This is perfect. It's always, it's all uh, awesome to hear you elaborate. It's, uh, I don't 
know, most of the music words you, you'll say because well, I'm not a musician. <laughs> <laughs> well, it also means that I like know, like if you're using the original Portal 2 engine, that has the very first prototype of the sound operator system in we'll, it. We'll get to that. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, which is, is, a, is a weird mix between kind of what became Source 2 and Source 1. And so yeah. that that system is, is a, it's weird. It's like a mix between the thing I designed and then the way it used to be, you know. Um, and so, uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, so, what inspired Portal One and Two's soundtrack? I think you worked with Kelly Bailey on Portal One. Yeah, but Portal Two was all yours. But what what was some of the inspiration there? Well, so yeah, Portal One they had. You know, you probably know the the bigger story, which is they had finished the game, right? The game finished uh, when you uh, got to the end, right before in the the current version of the game. What happens is you you think you finish, but then you go into the fire pit, right, um, and have to escape behind the scenes. Um, and but that was actually the ending of the game. Like it it was that was how it was. But we weren't. I I can't remember whether it was TF2 or um, EP2, but one of those games, like we just weren't ready to ship, right? And classic to Valve, so we just pushed shipping, but we knew we wanted to clump all three of those games together hmm. um, in the orange box, because, you know, we were still shipping physical, you know, items at the time. That was still kind of the primary way, in fact. Um, but, uh, I mean, Steam was coming on pretty strong right then, but but anyway, still shipping physical um, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Just um, expensive stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, but so they decided to add that whole behind the scenes section to the game. But Kelly was really busy with Ep Two, and so mm. and I was I was primarily had been working on Team Fortress, um, on the SFM team, doing all the animated shorts, um, and. And so, and, and I was already working on Left 4 Dead 1 at that point too, but I, you know, Left 4 Dead was kind of still, you know, still just a ways out. Like we weren't even close to talking about shipping that yet. Um, and so they needed music for the second half and Jeep, I think reached out and was like, Hey, do you want to do music for the second half of the game? And I was like, of course, that'd be great. That, you know? Um, and so inspiration for that was I listened to Kelly's music, you know, at, at length. I mean, I was already familiar with his half-life work, obviously. And, you know, he's a friend. And so um, I talked to him a lot about sort of how he thought about it. Um, but to me, that music really at its core in Portal, particularly, it's got some half-life vibes to it for sure. But in Portal specifically, it's got this sort of, like future sound, you know, the ambiences, the ambient music, that kind of stuff of like the seventies, it really sounded seventies ish to me mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, what they would have viewed the future, like in the seventies and portal kind of feels like it's part of one kind of feels like it's set in that time frame anyway, even though I don't know that that actually fits with the lore or not. Um, but the the vibe of it is like that. Um, and, uh, and so, when I looked at the behind the scenes thing, you know, like, cause like the, all the super clean lab and the white and, and all of that felt very seventies, you know, it's sort of like THX 1138, which ostensibly could be late sixties, but still maybe early seventies anyway. Um, it has that, that feel. And then when it went behind the scenes, it really quickly shifts to like this kind of Blade Runner eighties feel, you know, like, um, you know, it's all rusty and gritty and the machines are all grinding and you kind of get to see that aspect of, of the, the situation. Um, and so what I kind of did is shift to a more of a like eighties feel like what the future of the eighties was, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. and, and kind of, and, and move into that general feel. So there's kind of a lot more sweeps and you know kind of gritty synth sounds um but then i mixed uh, and this is something i do pretty much with every every soundtrack in some regard um i kind of looked at what was contemporary um and in terms of synthesizers and sort of what people you know were um 
listening to and what was interesting at the time and then integrated that. So it's kind of like this core of like 80s, you know, Blade Runner slash future of the 80s. Um, but then I mixed kind of more contemporary stuff in just to keep it a little fresh and modern sounding. Um, and, and so that's where you kind of get the glitchy stuff, you know, that's in there. Um, and, and also the, the, that, that idea of the glitchy stuff kind of also goes with the, the AI of GLaDOS a little bit. Um, and so that's, that's where the inspiration came from. I mean, in terms of, ex, you know, outside music, I was probably listening to a lot of, um, um, oh shit, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm forgetting their name all of a sudden. Um, I just sent an email to myself cause they have a new thing. Um, uh, uh, Otecra. That's what it is. Yeah. You know, at that time that, that the, the music they had made right around then, um, was popular in the office anyway, but I, I really, really enjoyed some of those records during, mm. you know, the, the late nineties and early two thousands. And, um, I don't know that it, it's a direct, direct influence in any way, but I was definitely listening to them as being interesting contemporary electronic music at the time, you know? Um, I mean, there were others as well, but they were one in particular that got a lot of time on my headphones. I mean, as you know, Jared, if you're doing sound for games, you don't actually get to listen to music much. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of one of the downsides, isn't it? You know? <laughs> Um, well, why is that? I, I wonder. I don't know. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> well, because you're working, you're you're not programming. You're like making sound. Like you're listening to the game. Like you know, your whole job is with your ears. Um, and so it's hard to listen to something else while you listen to the thing you're That's working what you on. Mean. I actually had that experience. I'm you know, I'm mixing um, all of the stuff. I'm implementing stuff into, into the engine that he does. I'm uh, mixing and mastering the. Um, voice acting especially and animating the characters and i hate doing that because i can't listen to my own stuff while doing that <laughs> exactly yeah I, I know what you mean now. okay <laughs> yeah um yeah i get really distracted really easily and so um yeah i i tend to i tend to keep all my personal listening either to if i'm doing some programming which it hasn't happened much lately um but or just in my own time you know it's kind of nice. It makes it really focused. Like when I listen, I'm really listening, you know, mm -hmm. um, but, but anyway, yeah, uh, that's, that was portal one. Portal two was kind of an extension of that idea, right? Like the yeah. future of different eras. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, very and then try to take the portal ones. Yes. It's definitely very different. Um, well, for one thing, I had a lot more time, you know, portal one happened really fast. Um, and it was also, I was on that game from, you know, I was probably number five in, on that team or something, you know, um, I was a part of the core team. So I was on that project from not the get go. Like I was, didn't work on it during, um, F, the F stop era. I was mostly, you know, it already kind of decided that it was actually going to be portal proper. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it, it allowed me to kind of conceive of the thing as a whole, you know, instead of mm -hmm. kind of coming in and shoehorning in with Kelly, you know. But so, something I didn't know um, that I said, maybe uh, um, I, I didn't know that. So, so what you're saying is Kelly mainly made all of the test chamber music and you only did the end or did you then later go and do also test chamber music in part one? I did. There's, there's only one part in the first half of the game. That's my music. And it's that you kind of go, into this little chamber and then you there's a little thing you can go through that's behind the scenes kind of and there's a piece of uh, music there with the turret um, in the turret chamber with the cakes the lie away first I, seed. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's right yeah. yeah um it's been a while since i played portal one but yeah, yeah I, I know the game very well <laughs> <laughs> I, bet. I, bet. I i think that's, yeah there's a little musical cue so it's yours it's interesting it's, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. interesting how you really can't tell who it what yeah, it's a, you know, I, it, I've i really, that's a great compliment. Thank you. Because I have really strived to embody, you know, not just particularly in Portal, but in Half-Life, but also just as a, uh, you know, a, a member of the Valve team to kind of continue the aesthetic 
of the original Valve and Kelly's kind of vision um, because he is quite a singular um, talent, you know, um, in his own right. And I think he established sort of a feel and a, a, a vibe that resonated mm. with the Valve, other Valve people um, and really set Valve apart and established sort of a Valve feel of sorts, oh, yeah, you know? It's a very unique feel. I mean, half, half of one soundtrack is still the Valve intro today. Yeah. yeah and I... Iconic. I try and keep it, you know, as close to that as possible. You know, we always vary it a little bit, but yeah. people, <laughs> people have talked about making like a whole new one. I'm just like, I don't, I don't. No. like it would be too hard. That's the other thing. Kelly is really hard to mimic because he's, his music is very personal. You know what I mean? Like some people's music is just orchestra and not that say you can't make orchestra super personal. You really can. Um, but sometimes it's just orchestra, you know, it's like it's classic standard orchestra, Modern right? Film music, very forgettable sometimes. Exactly. You know, whereas his music is extremely purse. You can tell that he played it in, you know, one moment and the way he played it right then is what dictated the thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, which m makes it really hard to mimic, you know, um, but I've really tried to at least keep a lot of this, the feel and the sentiment and the, um, you know, the, the vibe of it really. Uh, of course. Yeah. How much time you've got today, by the way, because we've still got a lot of questions. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm in between, you know, we just released CS2 and then other projects. Like we're at a weird, literally a lull. Like Valve has this really bad habit of doing like a ton of releases all at the same time. And I'm talking about internal releases, but CS2 released what last week, same time another project hit a milestone. So it's on the, like it's slowed down. Like there's a ad that we're doing that I just finished. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a fun, and I saw I was at the dentist this morning. So um, I'm, I'm not particularly in a productive mood anyway. So uh, it's fair. all right. <laughs> and I talk a lot. So. Time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've seen the pattern <laughs> i know i'm like wait i just went all of a sudden i was like oh is there anything on my shelves anywhere that you know at valve you've got to be 120 percent careful it's <laughs> I'm, I'm very very careful yeah i would i could not share my desktop with you you know <laughs> yeah um, let's not leak anything today yeah all right so the next question is um port one and two are very different different atmospheres Okay, I mean, you've already kind of answered this. Did the, yeah, you, uh, I mean, the, just in general, yeah. not just the music, did the style slowly evolve or was it just decided from the get-go that we should do a completely different style for Portal 2 than Portal 1? Because we see um, some, some of the assets in the free trailers have shifted. Um, mm -hmm. But still. Yeah, the, the style was not, the style was evolved during the course of the game production, really. In fact, I, I have a video of, um, there's a piece of music that people keep asking me about called, uh, it's Apple something, you know, it's when he goes like, say Apple and you yeah, jump, you know, space and, weekly. yeah, that one. Um, and, and there's a, it's like the fourth version I did or something. And it's got actually Richard Lord's voice instead of Stephen Merchant. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's really quirky, um, a lot like, a lot more electronic, a little more Portal 1-ish, you know? I mean, not that the rest of it wasn't electronic, but a little more sort of 70s synth vibes. Um, but it took a long time to kind of come up with the actual tone for the overall game, um, just because, uh, like, I just had to try a bunch of stuff, you know? Um, and it took a while, too, to kind of know, like, you know, you know, it's Valve and, and the way, you know, we don't have like someone who just writes the game and then is a is an artistic director and just tells you just do it like this. And you know what I mean? Or even this is what it's going to be. You don't really know what it's going to be because everyone's figuring it out all together. Um, and so, you know, I made a lot of music as I went, but it wasn't until I figured out that opening sequence that I was able to kind of go, oh, I get it. Like this is going to be you know, it needs to be a pretty dark sounding game, 
really. And that was because from working with the writers, you've watched other interviews, I've talked about it. Um, this piece that I have a video of, I'll release it on, I don't know, I'll release it at some point just so that people can see it. Um, you know, I played that for Eric and Jay at one point and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Like the mute, like the location, the music can't be funny because the characters are funny mm -hmm. and they're only funny if the situation is dead serious. And so uh, that mm. like once I totally understood that, it was really easy. Like it actually it was like. Oh, right. I'm selling this as a really like at like the whole thing is as serious and epic as possible. Um, and so that's when I was like, oh, right. Not 70s. It's all behind the scenes. It's all, you know, it wasn't 80s. It was kind of more like, you know, um, you know, it, all kinds of post apocalyptic anything. Right. Like, you know, the, everything had fallen apart. It was all overgrown. Um, and luckily we released that trailer when we did the ARG, you know, at the, uh, well, I guess we did the ARG first, but when we released that first trailer where GLaDOS wakes up, you know, I had already done that piece of music and it, it really resonated. I do that often. I'll use a trailer as a way to kind of figure out the brand and then, and then try it and see if the brand works, you know, um, you know, and I, by trying it, I mean like, you know, getting everybody in the building to respond and if people are excited by it. And then I watch what happens externally too. Um, and it'll kind of, I won't usually, by that point, I'm not changing in big ways, but I will kind of adjust a little bit to kind of go, you know, what, like, do people really like it? Do they not like it? Like in Left 4 Dead 2, there was this point at which I had some music in the zombie sequence and it was just part of the trailer and people really didn't like it and i was like right cool got it like i won't i won't do that in the game like it was too comical or whatever but so that first piece uh reconstructing science i think it's called yeah. um kind of allowed me to go like all right this is sort of the thing it's post-apocalyptic so i'm looking at kind of 90s you know again future of the 90s thing um instead of the eighties and, and, and the whole thing needs to be dark. Um, and then in that same kind of line of thinking from like the, the setting needs to be serious. The setting needs to be like dire, right. Um, so to allow the, the comedy to play out under those circumstances, which I get, I you see that in film a lot too. Like you got, you got to kind of take the situation somewhat seriously. Um, that then eventually kind of became a bunch of different things, but one of which was like, oh, I am going to need to have orchestra in this to kind of say, you know, epic. And I've done that a bunch, you know, like uh, Alex too. Um, you know, it's, nothing says money like orchestra, really, you know. And I mean money as in like, this is a big product, you know. Um, production and then quality. Get production quality and um, sort of also just vocabulary. We all tend to associate like, oh, it's a big action film with a big mm -hmm. orchestral score. Um, but again, I didn't want it to to not sound somewhat mechanical and you know computerized. Ultimately, you know, so uh, and that 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 conversation, that decision to go with, I'm representing the surroundings as serious, kind of also. Uh, uh, again, I've talked about this in other interviews, but uh, evolved into having the music represent the surroundings, period. You know, like, you know, that a lot of the music's coming from machines or, you know, that, that kind of thing. Stuff. Yeah, which was also a result of tr trying to, making the mistake, you know, mistakes are a good thing often, um, but of like having the music lead you to the solution Mm -hmm. which just didn't work because the solution is super unsatisfying if the music tells you what it is, like for puzzles like that, you know? Um, I wonder what did you do to like help place the solution with the music? I, said, I don't know how music would tell you the solution. What would you, what yeah, you, you know, you could draw people's attention to certain, you know, uh, objects or machines or like your, or give them a rhythm pattern that, you know, if they follow it, they'll make it to the, you know, they'll get mm -hmm. through the portal or the thing. 
Um, there's there's a handful of ways to do that. Um, and and it, ostensibly adding rhythm to anything will help you with a time-based puzzle period. Just like that's a way our brains work. Giving, giving yeah. it a meter does help with, with time-based problems. But, um, but what I found is if I led you to like go over here or, you know, like anything that was sort of like, oh, it was not cool, you know. Um, it was much let better to let people discover it on their own, but then give them more payoff using the music as reward more right. than as, you know, a guide. Whereas in Left 4 Dead, like the music is, is a guide, you know, that's the whole, it's a yeah, huge it's, part of it. It's a whole game, it's a whole game really addition. Yeah, I think the rhythm stuff could work in like platformer games, but Portal 2 is not really about the movement. Yeah, well, sometimes, sometimes it is, you know, sometimes, there's those ones where you have to... specifically about jumping from platform to platform in a certain rhythm, right? It's not really yeah. what you do in Portal. I'm, yeah, there, there are a few, though. There are definitely a few, yeah. I mean, I remember one from Portal 1 where you have to jump over the platforms in chapter 15, 14? 15. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking more like, you know, the, it's the, it's the moving platform down the hallway, you know, it's like this and it's turning corners and you got to yeah. set the, and you got to kind of like, you know, you got to kind of find your pat, your rhythm to, to get. And that, that does, there are a few like that where you're like, woof, 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 and you got to shoot the thing right at the right time. And. You know, anything like that, just having some sort of meter and that, but those sorts of meters aren't really, they don't really ruin the puzzle for you. They just help, you know, um, I, it's more like things that actually ruin the puzzle for you is, is the, is the thing that I decided pretty quickly to not do, you know, the reason my answers, well, Hey, I, I do, I do tend to talk a lot, but it's just cause my brain is always just churning so quickly. Um, but I also put a ton of thought into my scores. You know, I, I, yeah, there is a component of just like exploring and finding things that are cool, but that's not the main thing that I do. Like I spend a lot of time thinking about what the reasons are and the intent and what types of things will best accomplish the intent that I'm looking for. And then I, once I do all that, then I sit and write a lot and, you know, kind of explore all the different, uh, you know, theoretical structures that I might use, like modes and scales and harmonic structures and rhythms and all those those types of things. Um, and so that's why the answers end up being really involved is because the intent that I put into them is usually pretty involved, you know? Um, of course. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you yeah. can tell that it's very iconic music. Um, Let's jump to the next question. <laughs> also, um, important to we discover many areas of aperture which all have dis which all have distinct music. Which style do you start with? I think you already answered that. But how do you keep a through line with all of these styles? Like we have the old aperture stuff. Even there, we sort of develop the styles. Then we have the modern aperture, um, and even the overgrown has very different sort of sound. And then weirdly stuff compared to lattices is also completely different. Like there's so much uniqueness. Yeah. Um, well, that's sort of like what I was just saying is I do, I do usually put together, I mean, Portal 2 particularly, there's a ton of motifs and sort of harmonic, the, the structure, the harmonic structure of the whole thing is, um, is built in such a way that it starts out, uh, from a theory, theoretical, and it's been a while, so I apologize. Like maybe I can keep it shorter because I can't remember all the details of it. But it starts out uh, with a, a thing that's called um, modes of limited transposition, right? So the idea is that the the theoretical structure of the music that's playing is as simple as it could possibly be. Um, I think I even start out with a, a piece that's actually atonal so that it might be quite i might start with one and then go and then it might not be in exactly the right order but the idea so originally i was like oh nature has taken over so it should be like major and beautiful and nature's taken over but that didn't work because the world was scary and weird and major music is not doesn't i mean it, it, you know it, it can but it 
in this particular context um, wasn't going to work for me. So I inverted the idea and made it so that at the beginning, you've got like this music that's made in these really simple theoretical structures, but are hard to write with, super hard to write with because they tend to be dissonant, dis dissonant. Um, and, and as the game goes, the structures become slightly more complex over time. Um, and and so by the end you have this big major key movement piece right which is the um, you know the the companion cubes theme uh, uh, and which does appear earlier but so through the course of the game as nature you know nature's I, I'm this part of the theory there is that nature is less complex like it doesn't even know about music and so it structure the music is this super simple structure but it also provided the situation where i could use a lot of dissonance and create kind of a dark situation but then as time goes like i kind of there are motifs for wheatley there's motifs for the turrets and the turret motif is kind of less of a motif and more of a like a uh, you know harmonic minor scale right so it you know jared would understand but there's like it gives you this thing where it's like a half step whole step half step which is just this really strong minor like kind of classically minor flavor um and i just use that every time i have the turrets you know um or the thing is turret centered um wheatley for whatever reason he ends up with that classic in fact it's a kelly rhythm i mean it's used all through rave music too but it's sort of that map 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 you know it's oh, got yeah. the 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 three and two kind of uh, uh appended uh rhythm structure which i thought i was kind of like ah, oh, it's definitely kelly uses that um you know in the half-life universe but it's also kind of a real ravey kind of almost dumb rhythm in a way mm -hmm. it's so simple um, yeah. And so I gave that to him right at the beginning. And so it just shows up throughout. But if you look at kind of Kelly's, the modes that Kelly uses a lot in Half-Life and the Half-Life universe, and then particularly um, in Portal, they're really similar. They tend to be really minor. They tend to kind of push towards the Phrygian. You know, they're, they're way more in the um, a, a, a structure that's really dark sounding. Um, and so... I took those and pushed them just a little further, but use those in both the Half-Life games, uh, well, game and um, and uh, the uh, you know Portal games, and so that's what kind of ties it into the Kelly universe in a lot of ways. The sounds too, I think there's he has a really specific sound. Um, I didn't I, for Alex. I went and bought a really specific um, effects mach box that he had um probably still has just to kind of get some of those same sounds i didn't have it for portal but um you know i kind of strove for a bunch of those same things so what it is is i kind of come up with these theoretical structures um and then and apply like write music within them and and then by doing that i kind of end up with motifs that fit the big picture and then by using those motifs they create threads that kind of um hold together across a, a story arc you know what i mean um and within a, a thing it's that thing itself um if that makes sense yeah even somebody like me yeah. I, I can hear how this the motifs from the beginning end up in the end again um yeah and, and in portal 2 it's 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 pretty extreme because portal 2 ultimately kind of plays out like a big opera anyway. Um, even though that ending bit, you know, the, the fat lady sings, um, didn't like that one had kind of evolved naturally in the hallways of valve, so to speak, you know, like a bunch of us were working and I had done the turret, some turret music. Cause I had gone in to record Ellen. I was recording Ellen to do the potato lament potatoes lament and um and while i was there i was like oh shit that's right because she's a you know trained opera singer um and i got her to sing a bunch of just vowels you know um uh, and or um sorry sil syllables and um and while i you know while i was doing that i was like oh 
I can use this, process it, and then create uh, turret music. And it was just a weird, quirky thing that me and the animators did. Um, and and in the process, we were kind of like, God, it sure would be cool if the end of the game was like a big, you know, was an there was an operatic piece, you know. And so mm -hmm. it was kind of this thing that people kind of would say, but then no one was digging in and doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was kind of floating around. And it's a classic Valve thing, like, I don't know whose actual idea it was, to be totally honest, but I know it was in the back of my mind a little bit. And, you know, at some point, I think Bill Van Buren was like, hey, we should, you know, we're all in a hallway, me and Bill and um, Jeremy Bennett and probably Richard Lord was like, what if we did a big opera piece at the end? Because I think that's also when um, Jonathan Colton was like, I can only write one song. I can't do, we were gonna have two songs. And so he was gonna have one at the end and then one in the credits. And he was just like, I don't I don't have it in me to do two. Like, it's just too much pressure or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so we are like, all right, well, let's just, let's lean all the way into it, you know? Um, and, and we had already kind of started to set it up earlier, but we would do things like that where we'd have something like, like the moon shot thing was not the ending originally. There was like a, it was gonna be an aside during the like, kind of around where Exile Vilify happens. Um, it was gonna be this just kind of weird side quest thing. Yeah, um, uh, yeah and then at, at some point we were like, oh, wait, no, this is like, we should, this is how we gotta end the game, you know? Um, and, and, uh, and so every now and again, and I think, the opera, like I, we'd already put some turret music in the game, but we were like, oh, right. If this is the end, you know, that's when I was like, oh, this, like this piece here is some beautiful, like the, you know, the, 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 um, God, what were they called? Um, you know, the light platforms that, you know, are sunshine. I was like, oh, well, they're from, they're from, they're like a lovey thing. You know, I was all about the companion cubes love you. The machines actually love you, you know? Um, and so their theme ends up being the same as the, the final, you know, me care to do, um, whatever it's called. Um, and, you know, so there was a little bit of going back and kind of massaging the game a little bit to lead up to that moment. Um, but, uh, it was, you know, it had already kind of started to lay itself out like a giant opera anyway. Like I'd already done all these big motifs and I'd already done, you know, bringing things up later in the game that I kind of introduced earlier, that sort of idea. Um, and so it kind of did just sort of spell itself out that way. So anyway, that's sort of, and you know, if you look at, um, you know, TF2, there's all kinds of Themes. There's one theme that just repeats all the time because I kind of think of that as being like a TV show almost, you know, and so um, pretty much everything, most everything I do is going to have some version of that. Alex, less so, um, just because Kelly didn't do that. That's not something Kelly did in a Half-Life series. Um, so I purposely, particularly given the time frame of Alex, I was like, there's some, there is, there are some themes that repeat, but um you know, I kind of, I tried to not do that there, but um, yeah, but, but yeah, in terms of how I write, that's, that's a big part of it. I come up with these harmonic, mm -hmm. melodic rhythm structures. I write a bunch. I spent a lot of time at the piano, um, particularly in, in Portal 2, because I really wanted there to be a lot of uh, basic counterpoint, because there's also this sort of premise that the music could all be written by a computer right um mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of kind of really straightforward um classical structure going on in there um and so uh but yeah I, but in general i'll i'll simplify down to an instrument that's like good for writing whatever it is i'm doing and kind of just work in that really quick easy space i can do a, some of it in my head but i don't um, I, my penciling skills are not good enough to just sit there and rip out, you know, page after page of score, um, straight from mm -hmm. my head. I, I prefer to sit at a keyboard or if I'm going to do that, I'll do it at the computer and, um, I'll, you know, I'll input straight in. I try to not write with samples cause they do dictate sort of, they'll, you'll tend to write to the sample. And I don't think that's a 
I, that it's too it interferes with the process too much so i'll use other instruments that are more expressive to get it in or i'll sing i sing parts in a lot and then just go back and and match them up you know that kind of thing i think i think jared had a question as well that i don't have on my sheet excuse me i forgot the question i have to go look at <laughs> I, I remember it um, but while you looked it up, when did when did um, Kelly Lee leave Valve again? Uh, well, Kelly, God, all right. My, I'm really bad with years. Um, he first left uh, sometime. I want to say was like 2000. Uh, it was around the time of beginning of Portal Two. Yeah, so I would say. 2007 2008 um he had been working on a project that he with another old time valve person and they decided not to continue it and at that point i think he was like i think i um yeah i don't want to speak for him but i think he was just like he you know he had money from he was an early microsoft person like i don't even think he needed to work at valve um in the first, not financially anyway. Um, so I, you know, I think he wanted to do something else. Um, and then he came back briefly to work on some things um, and then left again. So, um, but yeah, I think it was sometime right around, it was either during the beginning of Portal 2 or um, I think it was before, like right in that era um, cause he was really into the thing he was working on too. So I don't, he wasn't as interested in some of the projects like around that time was Dota and portal two were the big projects, um, that were happening internally. Right. I um, just, I, I just asked because of, because the question wouldn't make sense if, if I got my timeline wrong. <laughs> oh, I think, I mean, I want to say it's, yeah, it's right around, around then. Um, and, you know, I guess the question would be is why wasn't he working on that? And like I said, even if he was there, he was on to something else. No, there was, the question was, Jared, do you remember it? <laughs> Should I oh, it? yeah, it, you kind of answered it already. I was going to ask if you consulted Kelly Bailey at all for Portal 2. but Not uh, really, no. Yeah, that, no, didn't seem not like that did. one. Yeah, um, that one is, you know, uh, uh, I think, yeah, that like that thing of like, how much did I like, did I decide to make it different? Did I worry about making it the same? Um, I did try, I actually tried at one point using some of Portal 1's music in the game. Um, and, it, and as I kind of did that stuff and tried to like reference Portal 1 or make it like Portal 1, I mean, in a lot of ways it is like my part of Portal 1, you know, the, the glitchy kind of that, that aesthetic. Um, and, you know, kind of big, heavy synth sweeps and chords and whatnot, um, pads is kind of like Portal 1 a bit. But um, I think I think what happened is is during those early phases when people were like, oh, we should make it like Portal 1. You know, I tried and it was just like it felt like a giant anchor, like it felt like a giant weight um, that wasn't helping mm -hmm. me to get the job done. And yeah, so at some okay. point I just kind of was like, I don't, this isn't helping. Like, it's not going to make it a better product. It's not like, you know, I even tried putting, like I said, literally I was like, all right, I'm just going to put some Portal One music in and see if people respond positively to it. But they were just confused. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I kind of was like, I don't think we need to do that. Like as long as we have like a Jonathan Colton piece at the end, that's enough, you know? Um, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I'm sure some fans would disagree with me on that and that's normal, you know? Um, not to, I'm not gonna say they're wrong. Uh, it's just, you have to make those decisions, you know, on, on sometimes. And uh, it, it, I think it worked out for the most part. Um, on the flip side, Alex was, um, you know, that like I really sweated over trying to figure out how to make Alex like Half-Life, but its own thing too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was, uh, that was stressful. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, so just, I put a lot, a lot of thought into it. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, you're already answering for future questions. <laughs> um, so um, there's this sort of industrial style that I see in Valve games after Portal 2. You know, the... Ve I'm not a music person, I don't know how to describe it, but those uh, so like very harsh industrial synthesizers um, first appeared in Portal 2. And then in Alex, we hear those. They're a bit more in a Kali Bailey direction. But I mean, even now in, in, in the CS2 YouTube trailers at the end, I can hear mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I can tell. So, um, yeah. But, but in Portal 2, there is. If you listen to some of some of the tracks just through the headphones, they're pretty much unlistenable because they're just so loud <laughs> and it just it's pretty much just a square wave turned to max. But in the game, with all of the ambient sounds, it works super well. Yeah, that's I mean at its core, that's me trying to honor Kelly Bailey, really. You know? Um not that he wrote a lot of music that was unlistenable, but he did some of his music's pretty harsh, you know, um, in a traditional kind of late nineties industrial sense, you know, um, again, George, Jim Thurwell kind of the, the, this sort of, um, thing that was happening at the time, you know, sort of, uh, I want to say like, um, crystal method or, you know, uh, nine inch nails, whatever, skinny puppy even. Um, and so like, it's, it's funny. I, you know, I find myself, leaning into things sometimes that you would say like, oh yeah, that sounds like me, but really it, what it is is me trying to sound like Valve a lot of times, you know? Um, the, the CS2 thing was really purposeful. Um, the little bit that's like the, I know the part you're talking about, it's kind of got a little glitchy thing, um, is not meant to be like Portal in any regard. It's meant to sound techy. And that's why Portal sounds the way it does is because it's meant to sound kind of technical and computerized and, you know, this, this future-y kind of thing um, and, and futuristic in that, in that regard. Um, and that's the role literally that it plays in CS2 because the, you know, CS2, the, the goal was uh, to make it sound really esports and not militaristic um, and like technical exciting and fun right um there's a purposeful move away from sort of the more serious kind of orchestral uh military sounding stuff to this this kind of more brighter more and so the synths in there are purely to kind of give it a modern exciting feel like when i think of esports I don't quite think of NFL, you know, which is usually like big horns and drums and, you know, maybe some guitar because it was in the 70s or whatever. Um, but I think of, you know, EDM and electronic music. And so that's why that's there. I um, mean, it, it is orchestral, too, because it's also like any piece of that music in that that new kit could be, you know, like, you know, uh, Ba -da 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 -da, and we're back, you know, like, <laughs> like ninjas in pajamas. Are, I mean, I don't know who the current teams are. I don't actually, I'm not, I'm not following right now, but um, you know what I mean? It, it, all of it could be used in a TV show, right? That's uh -huh. kind of the, the gist of it. Right. Um, and, and the, that, that industrial stuff is, yeah, there's a little bit of like kind of classic valve. It's tough, you know, uh -huh. um, the main theme isn't the main theme is very, up, up, up. Now ah, there's a little snippet in there just to give it a nod. But the other stuff is kind of like, okay, you got, like, here we go. You're going to play this game. It's going to be hard, but you're tough. It's going to be good. And then there's this technical thing that the team wanted in there to make it sound modern and techy. And if you look at the, the art in CS2, right, it's this orange and blue. It's very esports and, and, uh, and kind of, uh, modern looking for lack of a better even though it's kind of retro 80s it's got this super modern feel to it so mm -hmm. the idea was to match that um but yeah it you know like at the end of the day it i am generally not choosing that industrial synthy feel necessarily because of valve but i'm usually choosing it because it's the goal of the product 
Do you know what I mean? So um, it just it just happened to fit so many products that this. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, hey, we all like the sound, so we'll keep it for for our future games. But but rather, um, just happens to fit this um, something that kind of goes like, you know, it sounds technical. You know, those yeah, synths yeah. synths that are kind of doing that that sort of uh, kind of glitchy arpeggiated stuff tend to sound pretty technical, um, and so. I mean, Alex, clearly, I mean, it's like, it's straight up like, you know, what Half-Life 1 is 98, right? Like, and Half-Life 2 is set in around 2000 and, you know, 2, 2001, I guess, because, well, 2000, they're making it. So, you know, uh, Alex is set right between those two. And if you listen to what the music was in Half-Life 1 and the music was in Half-Life 2, like, I designed it to sit right in that space. Um, which, and to modernize it a little bit, like there's mm -hmm. that too. Like, uh, that there's the, a lot of the really harsh stuff in Alex is, um, is kind of, uh, impulse response distortion. And that has a really specific feel that is super modern. Like if you really pay attention and listening to films and some TV and whatnot, you'll catch it from time to time. Like it's people, it's a modern sound. It's not a sound you can, you could even get you know, 10 years ago, let, let alone 20. Um, and so it, I am always looking to modernize things a little bit, just again, so they feel fresh and present and like now, even though this ostensibly is set, you know, 20 years ago, right? Like Alex would be before Half-Life 2, more than 20 years ago, I guess. Um, so again, that, that anything that's industrial there um, is, is is designed to fit that you know that progression mm -hmm. you know it's like between kelly one and kelly two basically right and it's different you know like the the stuff that's a little more actually industrial like it sounds almost like ministry you know the the uh the i forget what i call it like transhuman crossfire maybe uh that stuff is is kind of is m like kind of more ministry sounding so it's industrial but it's not something kelly would have necessarily done um and that's because it's alex it's not gordon it's you know it's a different it's a side story it's a different product um and uh and so any anyway, i wanted it to feel separate a little bit too mm -hmm. but at the end of the day like you know if i had my druthers well i mean there you go like in the end right the the hole in the vault like that stuff is kind of, I'd probably write a bunch of complex string music, honestly. Like for me, like that's something that I would like to write for something, but we just don't have products that need that. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, pretty much everything I do is all about trying to fit the products and the products are Valve products. So there is a part of that too. I mean, the game stills all start with that theme, you know, and that theme is pretty 90s industrial sounding you know and so you know that's it's just valve i mean I, I think it's cool that you know you you can tell when you're playing a valve game you can immediately tell even if it's just listening to it see that's a i take that as a deep deep compliment just because like i like really think about it like it's always i'm always trying to uh, make sure that anything i do fits that you know, and, and continues that sort of thing. And it doesn't mean every product should sound exactly the same or anything like that, but, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully we're living up to that great history, you know? I think, I think Death Shot must have been the most different recently. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was, a, I made some of those choices, um, again, specifically to fit the product. It was set in the seventies. It was a way more kind of wacky setting, you know, um, and or you know, if you look at the archery, like I didn't do much music in uh, the VR lab, um, but uh, you know, I did do the archery thing, and it's just like uh, it's kind of vaguely Irish. It's kind of it's archery, you know, it's just archery music. It's like that music could be in a well, not Nintendo because their sound is super specific, but you know, it could be in in almost anything. Um, 
not very not specifically super valve sounding um oh, yeah. but but you know for the for the big temple games like i'm always thinking pretty deeply obviously very deeply about you know where what i do fits and trying to make it you know a work for the product b work for valve cuz the product is a valve product and c you know hopefully like you know be as good as the product is that's a pretty tall order all three of those things you know 